Here we go. This is the Brew Gooder Hazy IPA out of the pint of three. <laughs> Let's give it a blast. Cheers, people. <laughs> Well, hello there, people. Pointer people. How we doing? Are we good? Good. Right. Not a perfect draft keg review from old Baldy. No. But instead, a pointer review. More specifically, a pointer three. So some of you may have seen one of my earlier videos. I don't know. Was it a couple of years ago? Might have been a couple of years ago now. Something like that of this little beauty, which is the original Pinter. Now, looking at that, you know, actually it's not that heavy, but it is quite a size. In relation to my head, it's that big, yeah? You don't know how big my head is, but it's a good size. It's quite a size. I mean, it's got on here the, the docking thing. I think it's called a dock or something like that. It's got the main canister thing. It's got the slogan, the Greater Good Fresh Brewing Company. That's not the slogan, it's, I think it's their business name. Anyway, I liked it. I thought it was good. I enjoyed using it. The beer that I had out of this, the original, it was all right. It was fresh, yeah, it was good. It was definitely cheaper. Although, that said, for me, it was incredibly cheap because they sent me it. So, you know, it obviously wasn't cheap enough and distinctive enough for me to think, right, I'm not going to buy any more Perfect Draft kegs. I'm just going to use this. Because that didn't happen. So, you know, will that happen this time? Because the same company have contacted me and said, Baldy, we enjoyed your video last time. I mean, I'm not quite sure why, because it was a little bit fuzzy, a little bit shaky, and I was a bit of an amateur. I'm still a bit of an amateur. In this box just here, we've got the pine to three. And here, we've got some press packs. I think they're called press packs. Something like that. I'm going to pop that down on a bar stool that you cannot see just down there. Right, press packs. They did say to me, what do you want? I looked through the selection online. Pinter pack. Brewing ingredients. I picked two. I don't know if they wanted to offer me two, but I selected two. And I said, send me both of those. Please. Um... And I asked for a hazy IPA remixed. I don't know if that's, you know, because they had one before and they've remixed it. But basically, this is a 5% uh, ABV IPA, a hazy one. Um, aromas, hoppy and fruity. So hopefully that'll be a little gem. And then, because I have a lot of lagers and a lot of IPAs, there are a few ciders on this. I thought, I'm going to try a cider. So I went for the whole nine yards, cloudy apple cider, 5.6 percenter, and aromas sweet and tart apple. So they're the press packs. I think I don't know why I keep saying press packs. I think that's what they're called. Don't know. Anyway, they're the packs for the pinter. I think what I'm going to do is probably brew the hazy IPA in this in this review. But here's the box. I'm not going to do a major unboxing because I find them dull but I will unbox it now, speed it up a little bit. What I remember very distinctively from that first Pinter review was a very impressive box. So let's see if the Pinter 3 is equally impressive, equally as impressive. Outer box. Right, so this is an important part. This is the brewing dock, right? So that kind of bigger piece that you saw on the end of it. Okay, so once again, I can see they've put some effort into this box. It's very similar to the other one, but look at this. It's like a, yeah, it's a presentation. It's got a nice little bag on it. It's a pinter in a bag. Okay, so here's the handle, and things are coming back to me as I'm doing this. Um, the handle feels nice and solid. Obviously, that's going to be the pour. Um, what does come back to me from the pine to one is the slow pour that it had, and that was quite frustrating. Um, so let's hope that this is a bit speedier.
like I say, that, I mean, welcome to a world of fresh beer. That's an impressive box. But here's my little baby in a bag. It's not a baby in a bag. That would be wrong. But let's lift that off. That's quite nice, isn't it? Just to keep the dust off it. Happy days. So if I use this as much as the pint of one, that would be very useful because that got dusty. It's a lovely blue colour. I'm not going to pull any wool over anyone's eyes. They have sent me this. I'm going to try and not let that influence my decision on it, um, rating on it, because I will give it a rating out of 10, like I do like to do. Um, but initial impressions are, look, that's pretty light. And you do have to give them a bit of a swirl, a bit of a swish, a bit of a shake um, to make sure, you know, everything's mixed. So that's, that's appreciated, yeah? Um, the size of that, so there we go. That is the pint of three. Obviously, I'm neglecting to, uh, to mention there was a pint of two, but apparently like, they exploded and stuff. So, yeah, I think there's something to do with like the carbonation and levels of them or something. And they told you for a while, look, don't carbonate things like that. So it went a bit pear-shaped the pint or two, I think. I think they actually recalled some and then, you know, they got sent back out again and stuff like that. They tried to do as much as they could for good consumer service. Um, so fair play to them for that. But look, you know, that is the pint of three. Let's get the original out. Let's have a look. Now that's not got the brewing dock on, in all fairness. So, you know, let's have a look at that. So not, not much difference there, really. Not much difference. So what they did say to me is, look, when you start it up, or not when you start it up, when you, when you try your first brew, download the app. So I've done that, I've registered, I went through a bit of a registration process. And now what I'm gonna do is register this pinter in the app. So what I'm gonna do is screen record my phone so you can see, way, I'm knocking the other one down. Let's hope no one sends me any dodgy messages. Why, no one does, no one messages me. Um, while I'm recording the screen. I'll just cut it out if they did. I'm going to edit the video, make that many mistakes. I have to. Here's the Pinter app. Like I say, I have registered already. Didn't want to put you through that, but it does say add Pinter as the first step. So that's what you're going to do. It, it's quite a nice app. It's got some nice kind of visuals to guide you. Add a name. Bold is Pinter. Let's name my Pinter. Lovely stuff. Pinter serial number. Um, is it on it? It is. There it is. Engineered in the UK. That's what it says underneath as well. Add your pinter. Cheers. Let's start brewing. Lovely stuff. But let's have a look at a little look over this machine for a start. So we've got the old off carbonation thing. I think that's what it'll be. We've got a handle just here. Handle. Um, yeah, you've got the nice little rubber band that's going round it. Lovely electric blue kind of style colouring. Um, and the black kind of front to it. Obviously, your handle's going to go on there. Pretty simple. Pretty simple. Yeah. It's a canister style um, design. It's your pointer. Back to the app. Select your style. So what have I got? I've got a hazy IPA. Recommended. Brewing over a longer period will result in a drier and more rounded finish in line with beer's full potential. Yeah, brewing over 12 days. Minimum shorter brewing time, obviously that's quite good, can often result in a slightly sweeter flavour and a fruitier aroma. Brewing over nine days. Custom, brew over as many days as you want. I'm going to go for the recommended. Yeah. I'm going to go for the recommended because I want to give it the fairest opportunity there is. Yeah. So here we go. Brewing. Required. We've got a required. I thought that might be required. Also referred to as fermentation is when your yeast converts sugars into alcohol and CO2. Yeah. Seven days. So we've got seven days for that brewing process. Conditioning. Place the pinter in the fridge in its tapping position without the brewing dock. Without it. During this stage is when the beer reaches optimum clarity and carbonation. That's seven. That's five days of that. Five days of conditioning. Start date, 5th of January, which is today, 2024. Right. Tapping date, 17th of January. Well, there is a date to be excited about. Right. Let's start this brew. Got to purify it. Rotate carbonage. Carbonage? 
It sounded like a carbonara. Yeah, rotate round for a carbonara. Um, rotate carbonation dial. So here's my carbonation dial. And that wants to set carbonation dial, even though I'm purifying at the moment, to five. Right, which is your top one. Feel of that dial is quite nice. Let's swipe. Remove parts. I've not put the handle on, but obviously you might have done. Yeah. Um, unclip the tap handle. Um, no need. I've not put it on, like I said. Remove the front plate and unscrew the main cap. So this front plate just lifts out. Look at that. Front plate is lifted out. Lovely stuff. Um, and then you unscrew it. Yeah. So it's got a little thing in there that you want just to unscrew. Unscrew. I've unscrewed you. There you go. So that is off. Off. Check tap cooler. Check the tap is fully screwed into the pointer. Okay, because I suppose there could be some leakage there, couldn't there? It, it, it was slightly loose. I think it hopefully would have been enough, but it was slightly loose. Add, purif add purifier into the pointer. Now that, I assume, is in me pack. So, here's me pack. And one of the things I remember them telling me when the first pointer came out and they sent me that was that they've designed these in such a way that it can go through your letterbox, which it pretty much can. Um, but being as I ordered two, it didn't. And these actually did come separate to this. Cost them a bit more on delivery, but uh, there you go. All right, let's open this one up. Didn't bring any scissors. Very different to your, your standard kind of um, pack that I remember. This is actually like a bag look. It's a bag. There we go. So there's the purifier. So in the graphic there, it's got a, what I remember from the pint of one, a little bottle. Uh, but this one hasn't. It's got a little bag. Um, sanitizing agent, environmentally safe. Don't consume that. Please don't consume it. Um, and then fresh brewing yeast. So again, a little bit different to before from what I remember. Um, so that's got a bit extra there. Um, anything else? Some offers. Um, brew, enjoy and share. I'm going to add this purifier into here and then add hot water. Add the cap thing that I took off. Screw it back on and then shake the pointer. Attach the brewing dock. Check brewing dock alignment. Whew. Turn and wait. Purify the brewing dock. Okay, so that's doing that. That's why you're putting all this together on it. Carbonation dial to off. Purify the carbonation dial. Attach the handle. Purify the tap. Empty the pointer. Purifying done. What was that? That was 17 steps to the purification process. Now, you know, you wouldn't have to read that every time. This is the first time I'm doing it. And I'm not going to bore you by showing me, you know, put that basically into there with some water, hot water, mix it about, put it through the tap. Not going to do all that to you. Um, but I will give you my kind of feedback, how much of a mission I thought that was, if it was a mission. So I'll give it a go and let you know. Where we go then, people. So what have I done? <laughs> I've purified it. I've purified it. Basically, you put your powder in. You put hot water in, you shake, you put the cap on, the t twisty thing, shake it about for 30 seconds. It is a little bit heavy when you've got the water in there, but you're shaking it about, shake, shake, shake. I just counted 30 using the one elephant, two elephant process. Admittedly, with me going through the whole app thing, looking at every step, you know, which aren't complicated, those steps are not complicated, but... The first time you do it, you've got to look at it. You've got to read it, do it. And it probably took me, I don't know, six, seven minutes. That was it. I would say next time, now I know what I'm doing, you'll be doing that in a matter of minutes. It, it will come second nature to you and we'll be absolutely fine. I mean, I'm sure if you're a home brewer, that would seem like an incredibly easy process. Then I basically filled it then with cold water up to the black line. Again, like it says in the app. It does say a black line, it's more the kind of construction of the innards that actually shows you that it's black. You know, the white kind of lining, and then it turns black. So it's not actually like someone's put a line round it, you know, so 
I was looking for a line for a while. Again, you wouldn't do that next time. You know, you know what you're looking for. It's fine. Filled that with cold water. Bob this on, just so I could bring it out here again. For now, pouring in the brew. The brew, Mr. Magoo. So I'm going to get the old app out again, because we are now on to the brewing step. Set carbonation dial. So that carbonation dial, while you're doing the whole purification part of it, you put it to off and you actually do let it drain out that carbonation dial. It really is, you know, doing every kind of step and purifying everything for you. Very important with brewing. Um, you set it back to five, put the water in, and now I've brought it out here. So now, again, you're seeing my steppage of uh, what I do, steppage. What I did do while I was inside as well, because my perfect draft is inside, is pour myself a little beer, because I thought, well, while brewing, I might as well have a little beer with you. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, that was easy enough to pour, wasn't it? But there we go. Right, add fresh press. So pour the contents of your fresh press into the pinter. So here we go. Here's the pinter. Let's get that baby there. Just gonna take that twisty bit off. Now, I have just been back in to the house um, to get a pair of scissors because, you know, that's needed, isn't it? So here we go. Not the sharpest scissors in the world. Be careful, get an adult to help you cut that. Hopefully you're an adult doing this because really, you know, you, you should be 18, shouldn't you? Right, I don't know if that's much of a, a cuttage. I'm trying to be a little bit careful. I mean, obviously you're sterilizing everything, aren't you? So you wanna make sure you're keeping germs away from it and that. That smells fruity booty. It does indeed. Add fresh press. Let's pop it in. Let's put it in, people. Right, so there we go. I'm gonna pour it in. Oh God, that's, that's thick stuff, isn't it? I'm gonna hold it up like that, see if you can see it pouring away. Yeah? Right, I don't wanna waste any of this, baby. Pour that in. Oh, oh that smells absolutely beautiful, that does, I tell you. That smells like a dream. Now, I mean, it's thick. That's thick stuff, isn't it? There's something about doing one for yourself, doing it yourself, DIYing it. You know what I mean? I mean, if it comes out good and you've done it yourself, it's got to make you feel better about it, hasn't it? It says on the bag, makes 10 pints, which I'm hoping it does. I'm trying to not get it around the edges, I'm trying to get as much of this press into there as possible. Um, which is very nice. I do remember with the pint of one, I don't think all of these are in bags like this. I think some of them are in those kind of, you know, bottle-like containers that have more of a spout, which I think are slightly easier. I'm not saying this is hard. <laughs> it ain't hard. Do you see how I'm talking and doing? It's almost like I'm a, a QVC presenter. Or not. I dare say they would not have me on QVC, although I did apply to go on The Apprentice once, and they do like a QVC style test, don't they? It's irrelevant. Add brewing yeast. So here's the brewing yeast. Yeah, you know, obviously there's no shaky shaky or anything like that yet. So I'm gonna bob this in. Whoop. Made a little noise there when I opened the packet. You see that? In that goes fresh brewing yeast. In she blows. Lovely stuff. Screw on the main cap. That's this. On she screws. Good screwage. Shake the pinter. So this is when you do the shaky shaky bit. Okay, so I'm gonna stand up to it. You know, stand up to it. Sounds like I'm gonna fight you. One elephant, two elephants. I'm not gonna, yeah. <laughs> not really gonna do that. Okay. Woo! Eh? I have to have a sippy suppy soo after that, I tell you. That's a bit of pint of shaking. Now, I did give it a bit more than 30 seconds. Thought I would. Here's the brewing dock, and this does look quite fancier. Fancier? Bit more fancy um, than the 
the original, but you kind of push it down and twist. Twist and shake. It does say like line it up. Lovely bubbly. That's it, right? So turn it over into a safe space. It's safe in here. I'll tell you, it's safe. Safe as ours is. Ah, safe as ours is. Right, there she blows. Leave to brew at room temperature between 16 and 25. So I will take it into the house because it might drop below that. It definitely drops below that in here. And that is the brewing process. So I need to now leave that. So I'm gonna leave it. Seven days, I think. Seven days, just on its head, like that. Right then, people, we have got to the conditioning stage. That's where we've got. Now, as you can see on the app, we've got the brewing calendar, yeah? Brewing, conditioning, tapping. So this, these are the dates. So these are the dates that I've been working by. We're on Friday the 12th, people. So the color changes, it means it's time for conditioning. It's gone through brewing. Here it is, yeah? It's been standing like that, not just there, not just there, it's actually been in the house because it does want to be at room temperature. Tells you on the app. So step one is remove brewing dock. Better stuff comes out. I'm sure there's more technical terms than stuff. But that's what I'm going to be doing. Step two, clean the brewing dock. I'm not going to show you that. Clean the main cap. I'm not going to show you that. Who wants to see someone cleaning something? But then the interesting part there, put it in the fridge. So that's the part the missus probably ain't gonna be so happy about. It's gotta be in there for five days. Then that red, now it's time, is the tapping time, yeah? So that's when, probably on that, that Thursday, maybe that Friday, yeah, that's when I'm gonna start actually pouring it out and have a review of what it tastes like, because that's the important thing, isn't it, people? We wanna know what it tastes like. Is it fresh goodness? I can but hope so. Well, there we go then, people. We are at the tapping stage. Tapping means pouring, which means beer in a glass, which means happy days. Here she blows. So, conditioning in the fridge, which the missus didn't complain at whatsoever, for five days. We did have a Tesco delivery in that time. It was a challenge. That's what it was. Anyway. Let's hope it was worth it, people. So here we go. Now the app, I'm not gonna throw it up with this one. Yeah, and hopefully I won't be throwing up after this. I'm not gonna put up the app because basically the tapping stage is just pouring it, right? Anyone that's had one of these babies like a perfect draft or anything at home or had one of these before will know basically what you do is hold your glass at 45 degrees, you pour that beer into it and you enjoy, right? Now I did have a bit of a I don't know, momentary panic. I think that it can be classed as that. Just kind of midway through this kind of um, conditioning stage, I thought, was there something I was meant to do to that carbonation dial? I looked on the app, no. So it's been set to five throughout the time. I've checked again, and it is still five. So it does say if it does pour quickly and it runs out and stuff, then put it to off, but it's set to five. That's what it is. So nothing else has really happened. You know, it's just been sitting there, conditioning. So I'd have to say this whole process has been incredibly easy. It was with the pint of one, but you know, you've just lobbed your water in there or more of a pour. You put your press pack thing in, done that, shook it about, done that, put the brewing dock on, left it there, you know, there was a bit of dialage and stuff, but I followed the app. It was very, very simple. Gotta be said. And then, you know, when it gets to that stage, when it's done the whole brewing process, you've took the dock off, it's done a little bit of a, it was pretty undramatic. It was less dramatic than I thought it was gonna be. But yeah, that just came off, washed that out, wiped away the residue, blobbed it in the fridge. And it's been there conditioning for five days. You can mess around with different times on the app. You know, you can do a few more days, this, that, and the other, just to test out, you know, if you've had a few of them, you know, same ones, and you, you try in different things. I think, you know, with some of the forums, some of the groups and things like that, people might come out with different tests and say what the absolute ideal is. 
for each one. So it's worth having a look at. It was seven days brewing, five days conditioning. And now I'm gonna have, I don't know, how many days of just drinking it. Depends how good it is. Without further ado, I've got myself some snackage. Now I did that, look, it's got a little peg on there. Little peg, yeah, that's how I keep them fresh. So I did have some of these, Sensations Mexican Smoked Chili Nuts with one of my perfect draft keg reviews. I've still got some left. They were very nice and they complemented the Camden IPA nicely. I am looking forward to this little beauty, I really am. A little bit of excitement and just that feeling that you've done it yourself, you know, you've got a bit more ownership over it, haven't you? And surely it's got, no matter how much these, you know, perfect draft and blade and whatever you've got, no matter how much they say how fresh the beer is that you get through them, surely this is the ultimate of freshness. It's gotta be, hasn't it? It's gotta be. Let's give it a pour. Let's do the pour. I'll bring it in. We'll have a look, see if we've got any bubs. It's an IPA, so you probably don't need too much, but I do like a bit of carbonation. And that's one of those things that does concern you about this thing. Has it got enough carbonation? What's the head like? Is it frothy? Is it nice and compact? Let's have a look at that as well. I'll bring it back behind the bar after I've done that pour. I'll have a little sippy suppy sue. I'll have some snackage, because sometimes a bit of snackage, a nice beer snackage can lift the quality of that beer. Not the quality of it, but the experience, yeah? So I'll have some snackage. I'm not gonna rate the snackage again. You can watch my perfect draft keg reviews for that, but I will rate this Brew Gooder Hazy IPA that I've done in this pint of three. Will I be doing another brew? That's the question. I'll certainly be trying out that whole nine yard cider for sure. But will I do, unlike with the pint of one, which I only did one or two brews, will I be doing more with this? So I'll let you know that as well. Let's get it poured, let's see what happens. Okay then people, here we go. Right, I've got a nice faithful Goose Island IPA glass. I do like this glass, it served me very well think it's nice and clean. So I've got the positioning here of just to the end of the bar. You do need somewhere to kind of like, you know, have a drop off, I guess. A drop off, yeah? And that's what I've got. Right, 45 degrees, let's go for that. Now it does say slowly pull the handle down. This handle is apparently far superior to what was on the pint of one and the pint of two. It's like a rapid flow handle. Let's give it a go. I'm not gonna pull it down too far for a start. And I might get quite a bit of froth. Yeah, because it's the first pour out of it. But let's go, let's go. Just steady, steady, frothy, frothy. Okay, I don't know how brave I'm gonna be. Okay, yeah, there's a bit more there. It's quite brave, it's looking quite frothy. Let's, let's calm it down a little bit. Okay. Could get a glass full of foam here. Might have to let this baby settle a bit. I don't think I really need to pull that up. Right, that has definitely got to settle a bit there. Um, but if you push it back to stop it dripping, but a little bit of drippage, not too bad. I mean, you know, <laughs> it's a bit of foam. But looking at it, there's some bumps, people. Right, let's bring it in. I'll tell you what, I'm going to bring it in. We'll have a look at those bobs in that. Okay, here we go then. So yeah, like I say, that's got some foam, but hey, look at that carbonation. I'll tell you what, I'm happy we're brewing that. I'm not wrong about saying you've got a bit more ownership. That is a lovely, hazy looking IPA. Let's just wipe that a bit. I mean, there's some clarity there, but also haziness as well. That, if I was served that in a bar, I ain't questioning it. And to think that, Oh, I brewed that. Yeah. That is looking pretty nice. How's it tasting is another question. I'm gonna let that settle, let it settle. Give it a tippy toppy too, because that needs it. I want a full pint of this, people. And I want to let you know what I think to it. Right, let's go. There we go then, people. There is the pint pull. Well, not quite a pint pull. When I brought it in and said, you know, I wouldn't be unhappy with that in a pub. That's the kind of colour of it, the carbonation of it. In terms of a pullage of a pint, I'd be like, hello barman or woman, give that a little bit more of a tippy-toppy too. I would, and I would now. And I could put that back under there 
but I have done a few times. So by no means is this pulling a perfect pint like the perfect draft. Yeah, don't expect it. Now, I might or probably should have done something with the carbonation dial. I'll, I'll have a look into that. But I do want a bit of carbonation in there, so I don't want to mess that up. You know, it hasn't said anything about that on the app. Anyway, it's not bad. It's not bad. It's looking pretty damn nice. You know, yes, that foam head, you know, it's not compact. Not anymore. Could be down to my pullage again. But there's definite bubs in there. Nice kind of movement of bubs. Not too fast, not too slow. Lovely colour for a hazy IPA. You cannot fault that. So, here we go. This is the Brew Gooder Hazy IPA out of the pint of three. <laughs> Let's give it a blast. Cheers, people. <laughs> Woohoo! Whoa! That is beautiful. That is absolutely stunning. I'm not just saying it. In a way, I can't believe I brewed it. I know I haven't done much. I've just lobbed that in there with some water. I've not done hardly anything. But I've kind of made it. And that is a beauty. If I went to my pub and had a guest IPA on and said, I'll have that. And add that, I'd be like, I'm coming back here. That is lovely. Honestly, that is beautiful. That is a hazy IPA and a half. Whoa. The fruitiness, the hoppiness, the carbonation, the aftertaste, the mouthfeel. Spot on. I'll tell you what, if that was a keg on the Perfect Draft or the Blade, people would be going mad for that. I've quite recently done the Vocation Hop, Skip and Juice. I'd liken it a little bit to that, but not a lot. This tastes fresher. It does. There's a freshness to that that I'm blown away with, to be honest. Now, on the pint of one, I'm, 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 I'm starting to think now, maybe I just didn't give the pint of one enough of a chance. I didn't. I think it was Stars and Stripes or something. It was a lager that I put through it. It was okay. But that's as much as I'd say. I'd say it was okay. I think at the time I was kind of like, the freshness of that is really good. And it was. But for a lager, it's like, there's a lot better that I could get. That. That is really, really good. The fruitiness, the hoppiness, the, just the, the actual overall body of that. That's nice. It's smooth enough. You kind of, the smoothness of that and the body of it, I would liken to a goose IPA, but it's fruitier. And it's not just like your standard lemon kind of fruit that you got coming through. There's some tropical tastes in here. I'm not saying Club Tropica style, but it's good. That's lovely. That I, I, I am actually blown away with. I really am. So I am going to say like the drawbacks I've, I've seen and I've just experienced, is the pulling of trying to get that good pint out of it. Because I got so much froth in that first one. I did have to switch the camera off. I had to, you know, give it three or four tippy toppy twos and then it wasn't a full pint. So that was a bit faffy, not gonna lie to you. And also, you know, just having it sitting there over an edge, you know, you can have it on your worktop or something like that, but it's still doing a little bit of drippy droppy drew, a few drips. 
you know, that's just coming out a little bit. I've pushed the tap back and hopefully there won't be too many more drips. But, you know, it has dripped a bit. They, I would say, are the drawbacks. I don't know whether I'm meant to turn this carbonation dial now off or put it on to three, two, one or whatever, just reduce it to stop that kind of amount of head that I was getting on that pint, which wasn't a pint because of that fact. But apart from those things, the taste of that, the freshness of that is class. It is really, really good. I'm not just saying it. I don't know how that compares to the other presses on the pinter. Don't know. Be interesting to see how good that cloudy apple cider is, the whole nine yards. Looking forward to that. But I tell you something, I am not going to let that be the only one, the only IPA, or indeed I am going to try a lager, maybe even a stout, porter, whatever, that I put through this pinter. Not after that, because that, is too nice not to try some more. And now I'm even thinking, if I was having people round, you know, I could have a perfect draft set up with a, with a lager on there. I would put another one of these in, these brew good IPAs, hazy IPAs, because that is a very inoffensive IPA. I can't see many people not liking that. I really can't. I don't know if it's like I've, I've picked an absolute belter. Because when they sent me this, they said, you know, pick a couple that you like or like the look of. And I just went for that because I thought, that that does, does look good. I think it's got reviews and ratings on there. And I think it was pretty good as well. <sighs> I tell you, I've picked a beauty there. An absolute belter. Right. Just going to have a little snicky snacky snoo. Then another sippy suppy soup. <laughs> happy days. Happy days. That's lovely. Lovely stuff. Right then, people. I thought I was I was getting towards the end of that video and I was thinking, what have I not done? And I cast my mind back to the pint of one. And I did give it good reviews. I did, and I did that first pour, and I was blown away with the freshness and stuff like that. And as I recorded this one, I was again. And I thought, well, wait a minute. What went wrong then? Why did I not brew a load more? Why has Big Bold Review's channel not got a whole host of pint of brews on there? And that's because a few more days later, probably three or four days later, I came to it, I had some more, and it wasn't quite the same. The carbonation had dropped. That might have been my fault. I might have been doing things wrong. I don't know. But it was a bit faffy, and I didn't brew any more. Hence, the lack of pinter review videos on this channel. So, with this little baby, I'm not making that same mistake. So, following that part, which I've just done... You know, that first initial reaction of the brew. I've come back to it. I've not just gone in and changed my top. This is... Wait a minute. So that was... I think that was a Tuesday. It's five days later. So I did have two pints out of this. But five days later, what's it taste like now? Yeah, I'm not going to do the whole faffy bring it in and have a look at the bubs and stuff like that. I'm just going to give you my impression. Beyond that though, people, I've had another thought. Because it was so good. Honestly. That, that initial reaction was not fake. It's not because they sent me this machine. Which I know some people think that's what it's about. It wasn't. That was freshness personified. It was a beautiful hazy IPA. To the extent, out of my own pocket, I've brought some bottles. Now, I did think, you know, I can just lob that in a bottle. Then I did a bit of research, yeah? I watched this other chap on YouTube. I'll pop him a link in the description below because his video has been helpful, right? It really has. And you've got to do more than that. I've learned what's the difference between sanitization and sterilization. 
It's things I didn't know I needed to know, but I do know them now. So yeah, you can't just lob it in a bottle. You've got to proper sanitize your bottles, right? So I've bought some bottles. I've bought some beer bottles off Amazon, yeah? Got them. A few days later, got some, what is it? WDP, WP, whatever it is. What people were recommending to actually, you know, really properly sanitize your bottles. Then I thought, well, what about Milton? I used to use Milton in my bottles. Couldn't I just use that again? Apparently not. Apparently not. Has a soapy kind of meh taste to it if you do. You probably can use it, but it alters the taste. I want this to taste good at me bottles, right? I'll put a link, but I've just looked it up. It is VWP sanitizer. That's what it is. So you can get it off Amazon. I got it with me bottles. I bought a funnel. I bought a funnel because I want to funnel it down. I want to get it in there. I want to get it in there nicely. And apparently the amount of oxygen that you've got in your bottle, you want to reduce. I didn't know I needed to know this stuff, pint of people. All I just wanted to do was lob me beer in a bottle. Anyway, I've done the research. I have put my bottles in that VWP stuff. I've rinsed them with boiling water. Yeah? So hopefully that's therefore sterilised because I haven't got your rinse-free steriliser which you can get. Yeah, that chem stuff. Again, I might put some links in the description, but do a bit of research. You know, don't just go jumping in and buy the first steriliser. That's what I'm saying. You know, you can get the rinse-free stuff. You can get this kind of bottle cleanser thing. You pump it down on it. It pumps up into the bottle. It's all good. I haven't got one of them. I've been doing it in a washing-up bowl, which I did sterilise. But basically what I'm saying is I'm not just lobbing it in a bottle, and neither can you, right, if you want it to be good. But apparently if it is in bottles, it will last that bit longer, yeah? And I tell you what, the weather is atrocious at the moment. So I'm popping up to this garden, having a little bit of this, and it's like, I just want to pour it in a bottle, bob it in the fridge, and then have it. There's another thing, though. These. Yeah, these, right? What are these? Carbonation drops. Yeah? I've got to bob that in the bottle as well, because you've got to keep the carbonation in your bottle. You can do it with sugar as well. I watched this chap's video, like I say, it's the same one that said about pouring it into a bottle. And he was going on about calculations. I downloaded a spreadsheet, I looked at it. I use spreadsheets a fair whack. But my word, that's a spreadsheet. I thought, no, there's got to be an easier way. Apparently those carbonation drops are easier. So I'm flaking out a bit there. I'm lobbing that in a bottle. Yeah, there we go. Right. Anyway, people, before I try that bottling exercise, I'm going to give this a pour and see what it tastes like five days later. Let's go. Okay then, people. No flicky, flacky, flaky flu. What we've got is a tiny rebel glass. Beautiful. Don't know what that comment is. Right, <laughs> let's give it a go. I did get a lot of foam with my first kind of effort out of that. Might get a lot of foam again, but let's go. Okay, so I'm not going to lie to you, I am getting a fair bit of foam with this thing. I just am. But what I did notice there is when I pulled the handle down a bit more, it actually started to come out with less foam. So I think there's practice to be done. But I've not been practicing with this little baby just to give it a good impression. You're going to have to be willing to practice with it. I'm sure that's the case. I mean, that's not awful. Don't get me wrong. Not awful, but there's quite a bit of foam there. But what I can also say is five days later, I think a bit unlike the Pinter one for me, like I say, don't know if I did something wrong, but that's got some bubs. That's got some bubs. It's got some lovely haziness still to it. I'm hoping, <laughs> I am hoping that that still tastes as good and as fresh as it did five days ago. Let's give it a go. Cheers, Pinter people. Let's have a go. That's good. That is good. And I'm smiling a lot because, let's go again. Let's go again. Carbonation levels are absolutely spot on on that. And the taste is lovely. That's happy days. I'm relieved as well because otherwise I bought those bottles for no reason whatsoever. 
but instead, this is still quality. So hopefully, with the bottling of this beer, <laughs> it can work, it can keep nice and fresh in my fridge, and I'll tell you something, that is no way gonna be the last thing I do on this pinter. No way. If I can get that working, because I do do, you know, perfect draft kegs, quite a bit, right? I'm one man, and I don't drink that much. Believe it or not, I don't. Because, you know, having perfect draft kegs to actually review, which are like 10 and a half pints, and then this as well, I'm, I'm just not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. But if I can bottle some up, and they can stay in the fridge, you know, for three months or something like that, beyond the 30 days that I'm used to, that's opening up a whole new ball game, isn't it? Huh? I'm bringing baseball over to the UK or something. There's a new ball game to play. It's not just football, is it? Because that's good. That is a tasty one. It's that brew gooder. The brewed good. Lovely stuff, people. This next part could go very wrong. Very wrong. The chap that I watched on the video did vent it. I looked, how do you vent the pint to three? And I ain't got a clue. I don't know whether you just turn it off, the carbonation dial. It did start to hiss and stuff, so I'm gonna do that. Like I say, I think there's things to play around with, and this is the thing with this, it's a bit of an adventure, isn't it? You know, how good are things after leaving it for conditioning a bit longer, or brewing a bit longer, or whatever it is. Playing around with that kind of carbonation level. What does that give you? How long can you have it? How nice is it? What can you add to it? What can you take away? Can you bottle it? There's an adventure to be had, but when it comes to brewing, I'm very naive, right? I'm a simpleton when it comes to brewing. And basically, I brewed something there, albeit through this method, which I'm sure you know, some of the home brewers in the world probably frown upon or whatever, I don't know. But I've achieved it. <laughs> Let's have a go at this bottling. Let's just move this dial, see if anything happens. That's the noise he got. Right, so I've just turned it, it's slightly going to the off, and I've got a I'm doing it, I'm going full for it, because he did. <laughs> I don't know if it's the right thing to do. But anyway, I've vented it. I've, I've vented it, I think. I got a hiss. I turned the dial to the off, and I got a hiss. So I've done that. Right, I might pour a little bit more out just in case that also helps. Okay then people, here we go, here we go. This could end in disaster, it really could. I mean, I am pure amateur hour doing this, but what I've got here, look, is my bottle. Yeah, that's not gonna focus that well, but it's got a bottle. And in there, carbonation drop, yeah? So at least I've done that, hopefully that's right. And it's these, what I've used, these Coopers, what is it? Cooper's DIY beer carbonation drops. Just got them off Amazon. 80 drops there, beautiful. Um, and I bobbed it in the bottle. Bobbed that in the bottle, there it is at the bottom. I'm gonna go for it like that, people. I'm gonna go for it like that. I'll tell you what, there's people there gonna be looking at this thinking, what's Baldy doing? Anyway, let's give it a blast, people. I'm trying to bottle this pint of beer. <laughs> Right, now, that, that, I've got to wait for that to die down. There's no two ways about that. But I've got six bottles to go. So I'm not going to bore you. And, uh, yeah, that's that. <laughs> yeah? So I definitely have to wait for that to die down a bit. Um, not going to bore you and let you watch me fill six bottles up. But let's bring it back when I've got a successful bottle. Yeah? I don't know. It might work. There we go, people. There we go. Look at them. Six bottles of Brew Gooder Hazy IPA sitting right in front of me. Now, they've got the carbonation drops in them. Not totally filled them, but, you know, I'll give them all a tippy-toppy too. And hopefully, that's all good. I mean, there's some definite carbonation within these bottles, I'll tell you that. In fact, did I miss it out of this one? 
You can still see them in there. No, it's in there. It's in there. But some carbonation in them. I think, I think, I've got to leave them like that in room temperature for five days and then you can bang them in the fridge and enjoy them, I think. Don't take my word for that, but I think you have got to leave them a while, yeah? It's kind of the second fermentation process. Anyway, I will give these a tippy top or two, like I say. It wasn't easy. I did actually start to pour straight into the bottle rather than use the funnel. It helped a little bit. Um, but I'll tell you what I will do. I will, after this has been complete, like the five days, and then obviously, you know, me having a bit of a taste of them, I'll let you know how good they taste. I really did go to quite a bit of effort to get them in, that in there like that. You know, the sterilization, sanitization, purchasing the bottles, but if it works, I think that's a belter. And I do like these bottles, I do. Bold is bruise. Anyway, that machine, I think is good. I really do. It feels solid, it does a good, good brew. Definitely. I don't know which ones are brilliant and which ones aren't, but this one tastes an absolute belter. So I'm giving that an 8.5. Happy days. I'm giving that brew gooder a 9 because I really think that is a very, very tasty, hazy IPA. And I didn't really know much what I'm doing with it. I'm sure people have experimented and got better brews than what I've got. And if that's the case, then... You know, that could be even better. And that's already absolute quality. So I'm giving that a nine. There we go, people. I think that's a vast improvement over the pine to one already. I just do. <sighs> right, pine to people. I am going to tippy toppy to these. But what I'm going to say to you is this. Whatever you do in this weekend, make it an absolute belter. Enjoy. Have a few beers, no matter how you make them or no matter how you pour them with a few mates. Cheers, pine to people. Cheers.